Hey, what's good YouTube? I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and today I'm going to give you four simple projects that you can make to improve your space. You already know how to do. Let's get into the project. To begin, I'm going to use seven pieces of 5 8 by 3 quarter by 16 inch in length pieces of lumber. All the pieces would be adhered to each other using wood glue. The key to this design is that you alternate every other piece. In doing so, we give a raised look to it and one piece would be higher than the other. Now take a straight edge of some kind, whether it's a square or another piece of wood, use that to line the pieces up. The next thing you'll want to do is offset every other one. I started with the first row and I pushed that about an inch in and continue that process all the way to the end. Now I did thought I wanted the last two rows to stay the same, being that I was mounting the hooks to it. But after carefully taking a look at it and taking a step back, I did go back and decide to offset those as well so that everything looked consistent. Now after clamping everything, you'll want to take a wet rag and remove all the glue squeeze out. And after allowing enough time for the glue to dry, just come back with some sandpaper, sand the piece down, getting it ready to accept some finish. I find it much easier to just take a block of wood that fit between the gap, wrap it around with some sandpaper and then sand it by hand. After sanding down mahogany, it always seemed to have this white chalky look to it, but once you apply some Danish oil or your favorite finish to it, the color just pops out. Now I'm not a big fan of the super dark wood, so one coat of this seems to do the job for me, and I just love the way this piece looks. There's multiple options to mount this to the wall, but I'm going to go for the clean look and do something behind. And for this, I'm going to use some sawtooth picture hangers. And now to place the rod hook in place, I'm going to sit those about two inches from the end on both sides. And after fine tuning that, I'm going to mark the holes and then run a couple screws through it, pre-drill that first. And first I have these long screws, they actually come with these long screws about an inch and a half. You see they're a bit long, but I'm going to cut those, making sure they don't exit out the back. And all you have to do is just measure between the two and then find the center of that and then install the third one. Maybe the three look ain't for you. You can totally add more so you can have an even number or add four, spread those out. The option is all up to you. Install a few screws, hang this thing on the wall. And here you have it. Never lose your keys or misplace them again, but you have to use this. Maybe you got a coat or something you wanna hang on that as well. It'll totally hold that as well. Or maybe you just want a place to hang your headphones or a second one or even your glasses, or even your hat. Oh yeah, and you can also hang your keys as well. And next up on the list, we're gonna take the outdoor and bring that inside and make a tabletop planner. The material list for this is a small piece of pond liner, some cedar wood, some plants, your favorite plants that can stand indoor, and a couple of pieces of small blocks. All the measurements will be down in the video description if you want to check that out for this box. These small pieces of wood are used for my corner bracket, but if you don't want to go this route or you don't want to cut these small pieces, what you can do is use some corner brackets and those will work as well. After pre-drilling and marking, I'm going to use wood glue to help strengthen the corners. Now clamp it back into place and then we're going to install a few screws. Now place the block back inside the pencil mark. Now there's no reason why you couldn't add the wood glue first and then just do it to skip a few steps. But I wanted to make sure that the wood didn't shift and I wanted to mark it so that I was on point. That's why I took the extra step and basically did it the redundant way. And just follow the same step for all four corners. On the outside of the corner blocks, you're going to add a ton of wood glue here and it added on both pieces. It did seem like the cedar wood wanted to suck the wood glue up, so apply as much as you need. If this is done correctly, you should slide it in place and everything should line up. And to attach the bottom, I'm going to place a dab of glue on the bottom of the corner blocks and also wrap the bottom piece with wood glue, slide that into place, add four screws, and then we're going to clamp this box down and let the wood glue do all the work. 
Now being that I had some on hand, I'm gonna use the pond liner as a way to waterproof the inside of the box. If you don't have any and you don't wanna spend the money on any, what you can do is use a bowl or a Tupperware that's pretty close in size and build a box around that. And that way you have an indoor planner. Now there may be some concern about drainage and I don't plan to overwater these, so just put enough in there just to keep it moist. The liner is stapled to the inside of the box, but the finished product actually was not up to par. I did not like the way it looked. So I did use some of these other pieces that was left over from all the cuttings, applied that to the inside, creating a trim around the inside. The only downfall to that is it shrunk the opening for the plants. And that was pretty much a trade off being that this was an add on. Then the trims are only secured by using wood glue and a bunch of clamps, let the glue dry, and there we go. Now I can come back with a sander and sand this thing down. Sand it smooth so it feels smooth when you run your hand across it. The final color or finish is totally up to you. For me, I'm just going to use this wipe on poly, couple coats of this, and I'll be done with it. Add some potting soil to the bottom, just raise the level of the dirt. The plants I'm using here, they're called Echeverias, and you can pick these up at your local home center. They're pretty easy to grow from my understanding. All you need to do is just keep the soil moist and you'll be good to go. To put the finishing touches on this, I add some rocks to the top of the soil. That should give it a clean look and make it feel presentable. And next up we have a pair of $7 shelves that was made a few months ago. Very inexpensive to make and can be done with limited hand tools. And with all the pieces already cut, it's time to start the gluing process. Apply a good amount of wood glue into the joint because we want to make sure that this is a tight bond when the glue dries. For more experienced do-it-yourselfers, consider mitering the corners, you'll get a much cleaner look. Now to anchor this thing down, I'm going to drill two half inch holes per side and you want to make sure that you drill at least an inch down into the adjacent piece. Apply a good amount of wood glue down in the hole before adding it and also add wood glue onto the rod itself. Now take a handsaw and just cut the dowel off. And after allowing enough time for the wood glue to dry, you're going to sand this thing down and clean it up a bit, then apply your favorite finish. The paint I'm using here is R Rubs Brawn and you'll be able to find a link to that down in the video description. And also, I just love the way this thing looked when the sun hit it. I applied three coats of the paint on this one. I only did two, but a third coat would make this look even more amazing. To mount the shelves, I use a set of keyhole hangers. Really like these. They actually works out really nice in, in any project that you can mount with these. All you have to do is just drill out the back section so the screw head can enter the keyhole plate and then you can mount the keyhole to that. You can either flush or surface mount it depending on the type of look or how flat you want it to the wall. I use the scrap wood as a piece of template to mark the keyhole hangers on the back of the shelf. Then I also use that same piece to mark the walls and this actually worked out great. Made the installation process pretty easy. These wall anchors is what I'm gonna to use to mount the shelves. Of course, if you can find a stud, that would be so much better and more secure. But if they fall just outside of a stud based on where you wanna mount them, you can always use these anchors and each one of them is rated for 50 pounds. And here you have it, a nice set of shelves that can improve your space and don't break the bank. Now I'm assuming that we all have sunglasses and some of us have more than others and this is an easy DIY sunglass holder hoping to keep your stuff organized. Now my miter saw was out of whack and I just didn't have the time to fix it. So this project is going to get made by using a miter box and pretty much most of the cut is done by hand. Now I did luck out and I found this piece of wood that was 8 inch by 18 and a half inches that was on my lumber rack. Now I'm going to draw out 5 horizontal lines placing those 3 inches apart. Then I'll draw vertical lines spacing those 2 inches from the edge and do the same thing on both sides. The very next thing is to take some picture hanging hardware and install those at the intersecting lines. And since I'm using a piece of half inch thick plywood here, some of the nails actually exit out the back. So I had to use the sander to sand the sharp edges off. I'm going to trust the glue to do its job here. And once the glue is dried, it's not coming apart. 
Just be sure you get enough glue on all the intersecting joints and, and also along the plywood as well. And that way you have a tight bond. Now when working with miter joints and glue up, I tend to always go toward the band clamps because I think these provide the quickest way to clamp everything together while also forming the box and making sure you have tight miter joints. And like always, be sure to use a wet rag to remove all the glue squeeze out. And if you have clamps, be sure to clamp down on the middle section and if you don't, just use weights or anything to put pressure on that joint. And after the glue is dried, you know what's next. Time to sand this thing down. And if you need to, just add wood filler in the corners or in your miter joints if anything is not closed up tight. Now let's assume that you didn't want to mess with the miter joints and you wanted to go with the butt joints and you're planning to paint this. Then don't be afraid to use wood filler as well. Fill that thing in, sand it down, make it look nice. Now the finish is totally up to you. Do whatever color you want. Orange, red, black, white, stain, it doesn't matter. Just do what you feel. Do what you think that would sit in and look nice in your space. I'm going with white spray paint, high gloss stuff. I ended up applying three coats of this. That's what it took to get this one done. So the real reason for this is to get these things out of the drawer, free up some storage space and also making them easy to grab and go. And by keeping them out of the drawer, you also reduce the amount of time they could get scratched or destroyed by stuff getting thrown on top of them. I had a ton of fun making this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Before you leave, make sure you smash the like button. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And also, be sure to subscribe. And before we go, I got one last thing to say. We're almost at 500,000 subscriber marks. And that's like insane. Gotta thank you guys for helping me get in there, subscribing to the channel, supporting my work. So let's get the ball rolling. Let's get to that 500K mark. And I'll see you guys on the next one.